You're all set, Chairperson. Great, thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. I would like to call the January 26, 2023 Parks, Recreation and Community Service Commission regular meeting to order at 534. This meeting is taking place by teleconference via Zoom. The public is accessing the meeting via the Santana YouTube channel or the city's website. The commission members and I, along with city staff and recording secretary are in different locations. Please bear with us as the technology may disrupt the flow of the meeting. Will the recording secretary please call roll? Thank you, Chairperson. Commissioner Gomez? Present. Commissioner Nelson? Present. Commissioner Torreblanca? Present. Commissioner Wu? Here. Present. Commissioner Matthews? Present. Chairperson Herrera. Present. You have a quorum, Chairperson. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. If you all can please put your um, hand over your heart and uh, begin. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great, thank you all. Uh, we're back, this is so exciting. We're back after being gone since October. Uh, we have the holidays to, to mull over and relax and, and, uh, and the new year. So we're very, I'm very excited. Um, the commission's very excited to, to be back in uh, and meeting again. Um, the first thing on our agenda is presentations for employee employees of the month. And so this is something new that we're starting um, with direction from our executive director to honor the staff of our Parks and Recs department, including the zoo, our library, and uh, Parks and Recs staff. So now I'm going to uh, take the opportunity to um, uh, um, mention our employees and, uh, you know, the reasons why they're being recognized. Hey, um, Roberto, we actually have one of them in here in the room with us today, so it's pretty exciting to see, uh, see yeah, that guy right there, Anthony uh, Navarro, so if you'd like to start with him, that would be great, and Anthony, thank you for joining us. Great, okay, let me go ahead and pull the recognitions. Great. Okay, so um, we have four uh, employees of the month, um, and I'll, I'll read off um, each of their recognitions now. The Parks and Recreation Commission is pleased to recognize Anthony Navarro as the January 2023 Employee of the Month. Anthony Navarro has been a part-time staff member with the City of Santana Parks and Recreation and Community Service Agency since 2013. He began his career with the agency as a maintenance aide, level two at the Santana Zoo and worked his way up to his current position as program coordinator at the Santana Senior Center. Today, Anthony is being recognized for his outstanding contributions to the city's senior services operation. Anthony is always willing and prepared to assist seniors with questions and concerns and provide support and assistance to patrons in a professional manner. Seniors regularly compliment Anthony for his demeanor and excellent customer service skills. He has a positive he, he has been a positive team player and ha, uh, an attitude and works well with his colleagues. Anthony can regularly be found at a Santana uh, Senior Center greeting patrons, updating the participants database and assisting with the organization of the center's daily activities. He is always willing to take on new tasks and take initiatives in creating a welcoming environment for all who attend regularly or visit the senior center for the first time. Recently, Anthony took it upon himself to digitize the promotional materials displayed on the new television screens at the senior center so seniors can be can stay informed of upcoming activities and events. Additionally, he is also responsible for creating highlights reels of all center programming and special events. He's also been instrumental in facilitating reservations at the Santana Senior Center 
It is with great honor that we name Anthony Navarro as Employee of the Month. He is an outstanding employee and his recognition is well-deserved. So thank you so much, Anthony, for your work. Hey, thank you. <laughs> yeah, Anthony, thank you. If you've got anything to say, the floor is yours. Yes, yeah, my, my pleasure. Um, well, I started in 2013 with the city and it was at the zoo. So I know Ethan, he's there. <laughs> he knows me. I also worked at the library and I created the logo for the library, the, the, the current one. And now I'm at the senior center. <laughs> and, you know, I like, uh, I've liked uh, working for the city at the zoo, at the library, everywhere. Great. Thank you so much, Anthony, so, for your work you. and uh, dedication to the team. Um, I'm sure our executive director, Scott, has a certificate for you um, that they may be handing out to you, um, you know, when you come into the office. Yes, actually, I actually I have it uh, right here and I'll do my best, you know, right here. I think it's on camera. So, Anthony, you know, thank you for you know, everything you do for us. And, you know, like I've told all our team, you know, our coworkers are the backbone of what we do for Parks and Recreation, you know, so thank you and give me a little bit of history of what you did in the past. So thank you so much. And we appreciate your dedication and work to what we do. Great, thank you, Anthony. Uh, I will now move on to some of the other recognitions for Employee of the Month. The City of Santana Parks and Recreations Community Service Commission is proud to recognize Emerson Frankston as Employee of the Month for January 2023. Emerson, aka Emmy, joined the Parks and Recreation team as a management aide in the summer of 2021 and was assigned to assist in the Park Maintenance Division. We could quickly see that Emily was going to be a valuable asset. With the reorganization to move Park Maintenance to Public Works, Parks and Recs did not want to lose Emmy, so we, when given the opportunity, she agreed to fill a vacancy in administration and stay within the Parks and Recs team. Soon after, she had to learn quickly the agreement and insurance processes in order for Parks and Recs to successfully hold multiple summer events and the large citywide Fiestas Patrias event. She was instrumental in coordinating between recreation staff the risk management division, city attorney's office, city manager's office, and vendors to get agreements in place for the events. We need an agreement for an event for next week, became a common phrase she would hear. But she rose to the challenge and with a positive attitude. Her help in other areas such as grant billing, project budgeting, and accounting is very much appreciated. Emmy is a very hardworking person and self-motivated to do a good job. Everyone enjoys her cheer and pleasant demeanor. Therefore, for her performance on the job and attitude, we recognize you, Emmy, as Employee of the Month. Um, I believe we do not have Emmy with us right now. No, but Anthony's the only one that's joining us, but you know, Emmy is a rock star. And like I said, she just recently, she will be leaving us uh, Parks Rec, but she will be staying within the city and she has got a promotion up to public work. So they are getting, they are gaining a, a rock star superstar and you guys without her, I mean, these events, I mean, she was awesome. That's all I can say. So, you know, kudos to her, but she will get the recognition. So. Great. Thank you so much, executive director. We have two more from the zoo. So we have Anthony Cortez as Employee of the Month. While Anthony has been at the zoo uh, for over five years, we'd like to especially recognize his recent service. In inclement weather, Andy, um, Anthony has been flexible in responding to the needs of the zoo and its visitors, providing guidance on navigating zoo grounds and adjusting his schedule as needed to accommodate changes due to the weather. Anthony takes challenging situations in stride, ensuring that unexpected groups are assisted and admitted that changing zoo attraction times are clearly communicated and that announcements for programs are made in English and in Spanish. In addition, Anthony's attention to safety and process improvement issues has resulted in repairs to the zoo ticket booth roof and gate security, park security, and website improvements. The zoo applauds Anthony's for his levels of service to both visitors and the zoo as an institution. We want to thank you as a commission, Anthony. Thank you so much for your work. 
Uh, Director Fisher, I don't know if you have any words. Uh, Anthony, Anthony is a, a great um, member of our team here at the zoo. He has been with us, yeah, like I said, for for five years. Um, he he sort of takes new cashiers under his wing when when they come in and start working in the ticket booth, um, and we're in we're uh, happy to have him as as part of our team here. Great, thank you so much. Um, I will move on to our last employee of the month for January, um, Fabian Conde. Um, Fabian has always been a pillar of service at the zoo. We would like to especially recognize his service this month as he helps welcome and train a new hiree and ensure zoo grounds are safe during inclement weather. Fabian responds with good humor, creativity, and enthusiasm to unexpected challenges like moving gigantic office furniture, digging out major pipe breaks, fencing and pathway improvements, and even, even picking up a truckload of donated squash. Fabian's ongoing commitment to making the zoo a better place to work and visit is above and beyond. Congratulations and many thanks to Fabian. Great. And, and he, is, he is an amazing employee at the zoo. Um, I think he's been with the city for 30 years now as sort of a second career after he already had another another uh, career and um, just just incredible what he accomplishes with everyone and always always like looking for what he can do more and um, I'll be very sad when he eventually moves on from the zoo <laughs> so hopefully that's not anytime soon great thank you so much director Fisher thank you and th those are our employees of the month. Um, you know, our library, our zoo, our parks and rec staff, please continue to honor um, our em the employees of the parks of the city of Santana for the work that they do. And, um, you know, we're very much generous for their time and contributions. Um, next on the agenda is time for public comments. Um, hey, Roberto, Roberto, if I can uh, just interject real quick. We're also, every quarter, we are also going to be doing a volunteer of the quarter, too. You know, so come um, our meeting in uh, April, we will also recognize some of the community that has gone above and beyond for what we do. So we also want, you know, uh, put that on y'all's uh, radar there that, you know, we will be honoring them, too. But like Roberto said, the main thing is to, you know, showcase, you know, the backbone of parks and recreation, you know, including the zoo of, you know, these amazing talented staff members we have and you know we want to get their names out there so people you know when they do meet them out in the parks you know they say hey, thank you for what you do and so you know it, it's great to bring you know this back and, and hopefully other departments will follow suit of what we're doing that's great i i encourage it um next on our agenda is time for public comments uh recording secretary do we have anyone making to wish public uh making to Wishing to make public comment? Thank you, Chairperson. Members of the public, good evening. For those of you that are joining us, if you would like to uh, make a comment at this point in time, please use that raise hand feature on your Zoom. Chairperson Herrera, without seeing any, we do not have any public comments. Great. Thank you so much, Recording Secretary. Um, next on the agenda is the consent calendar. Items one and two are for the minutes of the regular meeting of October 27, 2022 and excused absences. Do we have a motion to approve the minutes of the October 27th, 2022 meeting and excuse absences? Commissioner Roberto, this is Ruby Wu. I so motion to have, accept the minutes of the October and just October, right? Correct, meeting. and the excused absences. And excuse absence. Great. Thank you so much, Commissioner Wu. Do we have a second? I second, second that motion. Great. Thank you so much, Commissioner San Matthews. And um, great. We'll move on. That Can we get a roll call on that, Chairperson? Uh, uh, Can we, um, uh, we get a roll call on this, please? Commissioner Gomez? Yeah. Commissioner Nelson. Commissioner, I saw the thumbs up. 
Yes, I saw that. Uh, Co Commissioner Torreblanca? Yes. Commissioner Wu? Yes. Commissioner Matthews? Yes. Chairperson Herrera? Yes. Duly noted. Great. Thank you so much. Next on the agenda are informational items. Uh, no action is needed from the commission on these items. However, this is a time for the city staff to provide a brief summary of their reports and for commissioners to ask any questions if necessary. So I would first like to, um, for our meeting today, let's please start off with, um, do we have Director Sternberg? We do not have Director Sternberg. Um, uh, let's move on to um, our Director Fisher for the San Plana Zoo. Great, thank you, uh, Commissioner Herrera. Um, I will, let's see. Um, I'll go through the operations report. Um, right now, one thing that's going on that you may have heard about in the news uh, is avian influenza, um, especially if you're buying eggs. It has definitely affected the cost of eggs, um, but we're managing, we're taking different steps at the zoo to manage uh, the birds that we have here to protect them from uh, potential exposure to avian influenza. So that's why there's some changes in where some birds are located. Right now, the walkthrough bird aviary is closed to the public. And when the zookeepers are working with some of the birds, they'll wear uh, gloves or gowns and just to protect our, our animals here so that they're, they're healthy once we get to the other side of avian influenza. Uh, we have some new tortoises that moved out into the tortoise habitat last week. And then uh, we did reopen the butterfly aviary, but now with uh, native butterflies that can take the colder weather a little bit better than the tropical ones we had over the summer. Uh, education wise, we have a variety of different story times throughout the week, both in English and Spanish. Uh, we are back with the park pop-ups. I included as an exhibit the schedule of park pop-ups. And also we're starting some um, some park pop-ups at the Nature Center while we're still continuing to get that um, open. Field trips are quite busy during the week. On Tuesdays, we have field trips from Carver Elementary, which is a special program we're working on. And then Wednesday and Thursday, we have field trips from many different schools from uh, Santa Ana and all throughout Southern California. Some of them as far as uh, Los Angeles County, San Bernardino County, um, Downey, um, really, we, we have a pretty broad reach with, with field trips. Um, I mentioned the Carver Elementary Partnership, that um, there's some photos of that as an exhibit. That's a, a really a great program we're piloting where the kids come to the zoo for, for the entire day. They come with their teachers and they have special curriculum that we develop together that meets all of the national um, standards and state standards that they need to hit. And also uh, brings in the career technical program that the school district has and starts exposing the kids um, to future careers as well. Um, so that's a, something that so far ha has um, been very positive and, and we hope to expand in the future. Construction-wise and operations, a uh, lot of construction still continuing with the otter, otter and primate project that we have going on. Uh, it was a little bit slowed down because of the weather and the rain where we couldn't do construction, but if you come to the zoo, you'll start to see a lot of things um, above the ground now. There was the first half of the project construction was all underground utilities and piping for the, the pond and, and all that system, but now you're starting to see uh, things things come up and that's exciting. Uh, we kicked off a new project with ticketing improvements. Um, we had gone through an extensive RFP process, awarded an agreement to a firm, and now we're in the implementation phase. So within the next couple of months, we'll be deploying a brand new ticketing system that will allow people to buy tickets online. We'll be able to sell um, special event tickets. It combines the uh, different items what? that the friends of Santa Ana do sell, so like gift shop and the ride tickets, uh, stroller rentals, those types of things will be able to be offered uh, at the same time as the general to admission tickets, which we haven't been able to do before. So that's exciting. Also, we're getting ready to um, start 
construction of the new goat trails area. And that's uh, an improvement to the animal contact yard. Right now, the contractors in the procurement phase, they're purchasing all the materials so that in March, they can get going with the active construction. And that will be accessibility improvements for people coming to the zoo that, and the ability to go in with the animals and brush them and learn about them uh, with, with zoo educators present. Um, what else? Um, the zoo is part of a consortium of Southern California Public Gardens. So we, we try to have professional development wherever we can. Um, sometimes staff go to, to different conferences or there's different meetings um, in the region that we participate in so we can find out what's new, ex exchange ideas with other facilities and, and then share all the things that we're doing here. Uh, volunteer wise, we're, we're still in full swing with volunteers. So if you know anyone that wants to volunteer at the zoo, uh, there's some information on the website. We do orientations several times throughout the year, and there's many different opportunities depending what uh, people's interest is. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Ethan, what was the, the age on your volunteers? Can you review that? Um, it depends what the volunteer opportunity is. Um, some, some of them are 18 and over. Uh, some of them are 16 and over, and then there's some for, for younger ages, too, with the parents. Right. Any other questions for Director Fisher? Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Director Fisher. Um, we'll come back to uh, Director Sternberg, um, if, if that's okay, for our library staff report. Okay. Yes, absolutely. My apologies, everybody. I was stuck at a meeting offsite. I just got back here. I really apologize for being, uh, you know, uh, late here, but I'm happy to give my presentation right now. Um, we got a lot of exciting things happening at the uh, Santa Ana Public Library at both of our locations. The first thing I want to talk about is our expanded hours for 2023. On uh, January 9th, um, we expanded our hours at the main library. We are open now 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday and 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Friday or Saturday. So effectively, we added a full extra day of service every week. Um, at our main library. And then we updated our hours a little bit at New Hope on those Fridays and Saturdays to match up. Instead of being open 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., we're open 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., which gives a little people a little bit more time later in the day, that extra hour. We tend to see more uh, traffic in our buildings anyways a little bit later and not so much at, between that 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. hour. So it's, um, you know, it's a great way to provide, you know, even more service um, across the board, make the libraries more accessible and allow people, you know, better times to use our facilities. Um, moving on, we have a couple of great new programs coming to um, Garfield Community Center and uh, El Salvador. Uh, our Garfield Teen Time program kicked off on January 23rd. Um, and it's going on right now. Lots of great um, activities for kids after school, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. We're going to have, of course, stream programs, which are science, technology, reading, engineering, arts, and media. Uh, month monthly workshops will tackle important personal topics such as finances, wellness, self-care, and time management, as well as, as well as broader social concepts of food security, local history, and cultural competency. So we're really excited to be bringing that to Garfield, which is already open. And then at El Salvador Park, we're, uh, we're giving the room, a room there, a complete makeover. We're making it fun, uh, kind of giving it a little bit of a, a modern tech look. We're going to have power coming down from the walls to do the, from the ceiling, I'm sorry, that pull down cord power from the ceiling to do, you know, some uh, technology kind of or makerspace kind of uh, programs there. And uh, that one will kick off this spring. And it's just a little bit later than Garfield because we're waiting for furniture that we order to arrive and the lead times on those are a few months. So, uh, so this spring, um, look for a grand opening 
Um, we kind of did a soft launch at Garfield. And then once, once we get uh, El Salvador open and both locations are open this spring, we're going to have a uh, grand opening. We'll have a ribbon cutting there. We'll invite you all there to come by, to participate. Um, and I think it'll be uh, the start of kind of a really great partnership between uh, the libraries and parks to explore more of these types of opportunities as we move forward and seeing how we can kind of embed in, in each other's uh, spaces and offer programs and services. Um, because, you know, a lot of times a community doesn't may not, not necessarily see a parks program separate from a library program. So if we can kind of bring it to them all at once, I think it's just a great way for us to partner up and offer more to our residents. Okay, so moving on, uh, just want to let you guys know we're going to be having a Tet Lunar New Year celebration this coming Saturday. I don't know if you saw it. it's been in our COSAS newsletter, social media, on our website. Um, we've been plugging that one. Um, this will be, like I said, Saturday, uh, January 28th from 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock p.m., we're going to have a boba truck there with some free boba for people. So stop by and get your free boba. Uh, we're going to have some, uh, a, let's see what it says here. We're going to have a, um, uh, a couple of like a lion performance dance. Uh, we're going to have some music being played and all kinds of different stuff to uh, celebrate the new year. So all kinds of different activities going on, music performers, dance performers, and we'll, it'll be out right on the, near the South entrance uh, in front of the main library. Uh, like I said, January 28th, two o'clock to four o'clock PM this Saturday. Uh, the final thing I want to add is our zip books program. Uh, zip books is a state funded program. It's kind of, like if you guys ever remember interlibrary loan that thing if your local library doesn't have a book you can ask them and they send the book from some other jurisdiction or some for, from some other library you know it could be anywhere in the usa or or even a local neighboring library if that library doesn't own a book so um the state has this new program called zip books and the santa Ana public library see, received a grant for almost ten thousand dollars in in funding to buy books that will be um, shipped from Amazon directly to people's homes. And let me explain a little bit how this program works. So if, a, if somebody contacts our library or comes into our library and they find that they don't have the book on the shelf, instead of going through a typical ordering process to buy the book, you know, have it shipped over here, we have to process the book, catalog it, put it on the shelf, Amazon, sends the book directly, ships the book directly to the person's house. When they're done with the book, they just bring it back to the library. We, it goes through our online, um, we, have, we have a form online to do it right now, or if you're in the library, you can fill out a paper form. And essentially then we order it from Amazon, it ships right to their house. We know what books we order, so we know that it's checked out. When, they per when the people bring it back, then we process it and put it on the shelf. So it's a much faster way of getting books that we don't have into people's hands by having them shipped directly through Amazon instead of going through the typical traditional process. So um, that one is uh, should be up and ready to go. So please take advantage of that service. Let your friends, neighbors, anybody in the community know about that. It's right on the Santa Ana Public Library's website. So if there's a book that we don't have and you want it, have it shipped to your house directly. and You can get it right away from Amazon. Um, once we go through the $10,000 and we've expended that funding, what we're going to do is convert the, uh, the Zip Books program into a continuous suggest to purchase program. So there will always be somewhere on our website if the library doesn't have a book and you'd like to see the library have that book you will be able to go on and suggest a purchase. And then we just have our typical, you know, our, our librarians make select choices about, you know, what's in our library and what is like, we might not order an AP book or, a, you know, on chemistry or something like that, because that's better for a school or a university to have. But it's most things we definitely order, as long as it's within the scope of our public library. And it's not overly academic, like a doctoral dissertation or something like that, that nobody, you know, may check out. But it's, as long as it's popular literature, we're, we're pretty much happy to order most all things. So um, please take advantage of that. 
um, order a book, have it sent to your house. Um, we're, we're, um, our staff is ready to uh, do it. And of course, we need to take advantage of our grant funding for it. Um, with that, um, you know, in my staff report, of course, like always, I list all of our programs uh, for the month, uh, you know, and take a look and always go on our live on online and see what we have there. We're updating it all the time. Our bookmobile schedule, you know, we, we change that up as well. We get to new stops, uh, parks, schools, you know, throughout the community, kids works. We visit that site, Pal Center. So we're all around, uh, where the kids are. Um, check us out. That's all I got. Thank you. Great, thank you so much, Director Sternberg. Yeah, any uh, questions? I'm happy to answer them too. Any questions from the commission? Uh, Director, I did, uh, I found the link online. That was one yes. of the questions uh, for this zip. Uh, it's a grant from uh, the State Library. So yes. that's, that's really, I'm really excited for, um, uh, I'm going to create a graphic for uh, for residents to, uh, you know, hey, do we, is there a book that we don't have at the library that you would like to make sure our library has? Um, yes. Yeah, please spread the word on this one. We want to spend this money. It's grant money. We, we will send you your books. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> the other thing that I noticed on your website is, um, do we, we have new park passes? Is that correct? Yeah, we got a whole, we got, so the park passes are still, we, we've always have them. We just got an extra supply of them to, to meet our demand. So that's a really good, uh, a good thing to mention too, uh, Commissioner Herrera. Uh, we got about 150 additional park passes and that'll help bring down, we had some big, pretty big wait times in the beginning with this program. And we only, you know, we, we didn't have a choice. I think initially the state just sent, like, if you were interested, they sent like 25 passes to every library. But if you had a need for more and you showed that you had a lot of holds and people waiting and you needed to meet that demand, then the state was going to send more. So we got 150 additional passes, which is really helping down those times. Those That's times. exciting. That's exciting. You can check out um, a library park pass and go to a state beach and you don't have to pay for parking. So yep. that is, you know, a great benefit to having these, uh, having a park pass that you can check out from our local library. Yeah. And one last thing, since you're talking about our park passes and non-traditional items checking out, I believe I may have talked about this at our last meeting, but maybe not. We also just recently received roller skates. And I think that is up on our website. So you can check out from our library of things if you're interested in and learning how to roller skate or you want to uh you know take it up again you haven't done it in a while you don't have an, uh, a pair of roller skates of your own we have lots of different roller skates here all different for all different shoe sizes come on in and we can check you out a pair of roller skates we also have the protective gear that you can check out with it as well helmets knee pads shoulder pads or elbow pads everything that's that's amazing. I used to rollerblade to uh, the library. <laughs> so happy about it. Outstanding. So now you can do it again if you wanted to. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Director. Um, to now move on to um, Susie uh, Ferginak, who is our Associate Park and Landscape Planner to give an update on parks and facilities. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, Herrera, good evening, everyone. It's good to be here. We have a lot going on. I want to highlight um, a number of projects and things that we're doing. And then if you have questions beyond that, I'm happy to answer them. Um, we have a lot under construction right now. Um, we have, and, and of that, we have four pretty big projects underway that are rolling along really well. Um, the Everyone knows about the um, Re redevelopment that's happening around the gas house area around Santiago Park. I was just out there this morning and it's really looking amazing. It is really looking amazing. Everything is in place, the sidewalks, the lighting, um, the um, guardrails, handrails, all the furniture is on site. Um, we staked all the locations for the trees. Landscaping is going to begin to go in. The playground, half the playground equipment is in. It's 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 an amazing, it's an amazing project. Really excited. Um, same thing over at Santa Anita. That project is rolling along really well too. That is an eighteen million dollar project. Um, it is that 
it's a brand new park. It is a brand new park. And in, in addition to the park moving along really great, um, we just kicked off with the architect that is going to be designing our new community center over there. So we're really excited to um, get that process going too. Um, Rate right Myrtle Park, another big one, rolling along, re rolling along really well, and um, fantastic pro project going on over at the zoo with the, that giant river otter and the primate trails. Um, we have a couple of projects that are advertising, newly advertised Centennial Lake is finally on the streets. Um, we're gonna open bids in February and looking to have that lake under renovation um, by spring. Um, we also are um, going to receive proposals next week to do restroom replacements at Angel Heritage Riverview and Windsor Park. So we're excited that that's finally a step closer to happening. Um, earlier today, we reviewed proposals to hire a consultant to help us renovate Cypress um, Center, the old fire station. Um, really excited um, to select a consultant that has real historical expertise. So we're excited. Uh, we're looking to award that contract in March. Excited to get that project um, going. Standard McFadden, the new park that's going in at that intersection. Um, we're putting finishing touches on it. It will be advertised within the next two weeks. Um, so we will be breaking ground probably this summer. Um, Centennial Dog Park, we've kicked off the process to develop the contract documents. Um, and along with that, we just submitted an official formal funding request to our city lobbyist so that they can go at state level and try to um, get some serious money to put towards that project. Um, and speaking of money, we had two grant applications pending. We have two grant applications pe um, pending. Um, one is for Santiago Park to design the um, habitat restoration at the East End. Um, we've been shortlisted. There's a meeting um, that we will attend on February the 2nd next week. Um, the state board, um, Coastal Conservancy Board will be hearing our project and making a recommendation and things are looking good. Um, and then um, secondly, um, there was a grant application um, submitted to the state um, natural resources agency, $3.5 million, um, $3.75 million ask to develop the property on Bristol at Tolliver. Um, we've made it through two site visits and are at the third step, so funding is looking really good there. Um, our park maintenance department has been busy doing projects. They are um, currently working on improvements out at the Santiago Lawn Bowling Clubhouse, both inside and out at the Nature Center. Um, they're working on a project to completely replace the playground equipment out at the George Upton. Um, all access park. They are completing the fitness court installation at eight sites. Um, they're working on some new park signage where we're going to be updating our park hours. Um, along with all that, they respond to over 200 um, work orders a month that they get via My Santa Ana. That keeps them pretty busy. Um, and um, the last thing I'll mention is they um, rec recently um, have new contracts and pending contracts um, to be put in place, utilizing $2.5 million of general fund money for service enhancements. Um, and that includes um, a new security company, pool services, lake management, pressure washing, tree trimming, rubber surfacing for our playgrounds, um, sports court resurfacing, and um, synthetic turf synthetic turf maintenance. Um, those are the highlights. If you have any questions beyond what I just mentioned there, happy to answer. Also want to mention that starting next month, we'll be doing 
um, short presentations about the parks master plan to help every uh, get everyone more familiar with what that document is all about and what are some of the other planning um, efforts that are happening um, that will lead to more of these types of things. Great, thank you so much for this update. Um, do we have any questions uh, from the commission? Um, yeah, Commissioner Nelson here. A um, couple of questions regarding resurfacing. Um, uh, I would kind of, I would, I would like to propose that we, if it's possible, to find out how many tennis courts that we have in Santa Ana and then what the utilization rate is for them. Um, not saying we need to resurface them, but I think if we, if we are, have that potential to look at doing them as potentially futsal um, pitches, which uh, I bring that up as I've seen them in Anaheim, and then I've also seen them uh, here in the city of Carson at the uh, LA Galaxy Stadium. It's a fantastic way to utilize underutilized portions of our mm -hmm. of our courts, um, and I just would like to to kind of get some more understanding of what we have and what the utilization rate is, and then you know see if we can figure out what that costing would be because it's uh, it's growing in demand pretty much everywhere throughout the country, and um, being that so soccer is such a huge uh, part of a lot of the youth in our city, I think that we should. Um, look at that as an opportunity to, to, to if we're going to resurface to maybe add some futsal lines so we will absolutely do that thank you for mentioning that that is the sort of thing one of the many things that our parks master plan is asking us to do so thank you for um, bringing that to us any other questions or comments um, Susie, I do want to thank you for really listing out. It seems like repetitive, but it's not. I really love how you list out where our pro projects are, where the design phase is. It's long, but <laughs> honestly, the trend, it, it, it shows that we're working. You know, sometimes folks don't see that these our parks are moving along. And so, mm -hmm. and how you have it listed out, I'm like, great. The public, feel, you know, I feel more confident knowing that, you know, we're doing amazing, that things are, are coming down the pipeline. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad you said that. I abbreviated the report this month because there was just so much information. Um, and I thought, you know, let's just, let's just, you know, be concise about what we're doing. We can talk about it. We can answer questions. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, okay, let's move on. Um, and finally, here we have, um, let's see. We have our, our uh, give me one second. Our Parks, uh, Recreation and Community Service staff report. Um, we have Tim Pagano here to give uh, an update. Thank you, Chairperson Herrera, and good evening to all the commissioners out there. Um, we've been very busy since October, so I also have an abbreviated report, but it doesn't seem like an abbreviated report, so I'll just put, preface that with everybody. Um, I'll try to be concise in, in what I deliver, and again, I'll be uh, available for any questions or comments that you may have. Um, we'll start off with special events. So we just wrapped up the Winter Village probably about two weeks ago. That was our ice skate, uh, ice skating rink that was featured here in the Civic Center Plaza. Uh, really great event for us. Um, we added a lot of uh, elements that weren't there in Winter Village 1. Um, Winter Village 1 was overseen by our Public Works Agency. This is the first year that Parks, Recreation, Community Services had the opportunity to, um, you know, uh, coordinate this year's event. Uh, and you saw a lot of uh, exciting elements such as partnerships with Power One Foundation, um, nonprofits. We had added a light show. We brought the uh, Christmas tree lighting to the Civic Center Plaza. Um, we partnered with the Anaheim Ducks, um, uh, Planet Fitness. Uh, and those were some pretty legitimate uh, partnerships that we actually went out and sought in terms of corporate sponsorships so that we could add value to um, the event space. So uh, despite some of the weather that we had towards the end of the, um, uh, the month of December, 
um, we did very well and we were on par with uh, the uh, event uh, of the previous year. So we're very excited about that and uh, the effort of our special events team. Um, some things to be on the lookout for are ex excellent uh, egg hunt will be back this year. It was the first time that we did that last year. We are anticipating 1,600 folks to come out and join us. We had 5,000, so we're expecting uh, a similar result this year. It will be at Centennial Park on uh, April 8th, and um, it will be from about 9 to 1 p.m. Again, all the elements that we had last year in terms of, terms of a kid's fun zone, uh, Easter egg hunts for age-appropriate levels, um, carnival games, and our agency partners will be out there in force. Um, summer programming for special events has also begun. Uh, movies in the park, concerts in the park are coming back. Juneteenth will be uh, also back this year, and we're very excited. We've already started working with our community-based partners to um, uh, start the planning process. It will be on June 17th this year, and our July 4th uh, event will be uh, back, obviously. Um, but some added elements that we're looking at for both Juneteenth and the July 4th events are uh, barbecue competitions both at, at both uh, Juneteenth and July 4th um, and also uh, maybe some car elements as well too um, to uh, have a car show out there. Um, in our health and wellness section we're gearing up for our 5k, 10k, one mile fun run and toddler trot on April 21st and April 22nd this year. Um, you'll be on the lookout for some notifications on how to sign up and get involved but we're really excited um, with the running aspect. We're expanding it from a 5K to a 10K. So for all you serious runners out there, um, we're gonna be able to stretch our legs a little bit more. Plus we're going to really encourage the kids to come out and run at, on the field of Santa Ana Stadium, um, Friday night, uh, April 21st for that one mile fun run and also the uh, toddler trot we're really looking forward to as well. Um, another element that we're adding value to on the 5K, 10K day, we will be having a Fit Fest directly following it. So we're inviting a lot of our health and wellness partners to join us and just to kind of round out the event so people just don't you know, run and then they're going back home. We were inviting them to stick around with us a little bit longer. Um, food, healthy food, um, uh, you know, demonstrations from local gyms, all that type of stuff. So we're really excited about how that event is shaping up. Um, we have our community garden expansion. Our hours are expanding. Um, the amount of uh, programs that we're doing is expanding. We're adding a compost element to it, um, and we're really excited about our partners. So um, be on the lookout at all, for all the community gardens and the programming that's going on there. And finally, we have our Wilderness Club, which has kind of uh, been growing um, with each offering. Uh, coming up soon, we have our Native Seed Garden uh, Tour. Over uh, and that's coming up. Excuse me, real quick. I'll just look up the date real quick. Um, and also a whale watching trip. So if that at all interests you, um, the native seed will be uh, February 18th, and our um, excuse, excuse me, sorry. Uh, uh, whale watching will be on April 6th. April 6th, yes, thank you very much, I appreciate that. So we have a lot of exciting things coming out of health and wellness. One of the exciting things that I think I may have mentioned in our October meeting, but we have solidified it now, uh, aquatics is back and it is back as a core service of parks, recreation, community services. We went through a very extensive uh, recruiting process and we're very happy to announce that we have both the aquatic supervisor and an aquatics coordinator on board um, both of which have the highest certifications that you can get in terms of water safety instructor training and also lifeguard instructor training. Um, those certificates, at least the LGIT, um, I think maybe seven people in the state have it. So what that means is that our guards will be trained at the highest level internally. So they're going to be Santa Ana guards. They're going to be trained in a very um, high level, and we're hoping that that will be a recruiting technique and also a retention technique because there is a national lifeguard shortage that is going on right now throughout the nation. A lot of people are struggling to get lifeguards on deck. Um, some things to be looking out for, our, learn, our swimming lessons will be featured this summer. We're gonna have parent and me offerings, preschool lessons, and also learn to swim lessons that will be um, offered 
throughout the summertime starting Memorial Day. And then recreation swim offerings will also accompany that. We're starting off a little bit slower. We have a lot of ideas for programming coming out of aquatics, including aqua zumba, senior swim, lap swim, but we're incrementally trying to gear up to um, make sure that we're, we have all the infrastructure in place to be able to deliver that to the community. Um, one last thing with aquatics, we've established an American Red Cross partnership. We are a licensed training provider. And in that, um, our aquatics team has secured $14,000 for the next three years for learn to swim scholarships. So right now our swim lessons for residents is $55, but if you qualify for a learn to swim scholarship, it's gonna be a $40 scholarship. So our Santa Ana residents will only pay $15 for four hours of uh, swim lessons. So we're very excited about that partnership and what we're gonna be able to do with the American Red Cross moving forward. Senior services is expanding their services by incorporating classes from uh, Santa Ana College and the Amistad Medical Services. So we're looking to in, in, in increase our portfolio in terms of the classes that are offered at both of our senior centers. Um, we're also expanding or looking to expand our senior mobility program by hiring full-time drivers for the first time. So that will most likely be towards the beginning of next fiscal year. We're working with HR to hammer out all the classification issues with that, but that will mean more opportunities for our seniors to travel to and from our senior centers so that they can receive the services that are there. Uh, we're also revamping our special events at both centers, uh, in addition to including more excursions, both locally and uh, beyond local uh, for our, our senior participants. Our community engagement uh, team, which is brand new, um, the result of the cultura, the, the first issue of the cultura. The second issue of the cultura is gonna be coming out in the next two weeks. Uh, we're really excited about that. It's gonna feature all of our services between February and uh, I believe mid-May, if my memory serves me correctly. So be on the lookout for that. You have an opportunity once it comes out to su subscribe to get a hard copy, but most of our copies are gonna be digital because we're trying to reduce our carbon footprint. Um, and uh, for the first time, we have the whole cultura that is translated in Spanish. So we're very excited about that. And um, we're hoping to get some feedback on how the community receives that. Uh, in addition, our social media presence has increased 32% in growth and engagement from when our community engagement team came on through our social media platforms. And that's pretty great because um, in some of the things that we were doing for the Winter Village, um, we were getting like 8,000 views on our reels, you know, and, you know, that, that's just a snapshot of what's actually happening. Those 8,000, you know, views multiply into engagements and bringing attention to like the Winter Village and all of our services and everything. Um, our community outreach section, uh, they hosted a kids night out at El Salvador this last weekend in which they brought in, I believe, 15 tons of snow. And we had 53 kids that actually were able to participate and have snow in January, which is a great strike forward for the Kids Night Out program. I believe the first time that they uh, put out a Kids Night Out program, we had three participants. So to increase it to 53 and just three offerings is a tremendous amount of growth. And we're looking forward to continuing that uh, into the future. Um, in addition, our community outreach section has developed the Santa Ana Collaborative. And I think I may have mentioned this in previous meetings, but it was an effort to bring all the community-based organizations, nonprofits, um, school district, police officer, you know, or SAPD to the table and talk about the resources that they have at their disposal and see if they can leverage each other's resources. And so far, you know, again, we went from just having informal meetings to maybe three um, stakeholders to now where we have 20 CBOs, nonprofits, and uh, stakeholders involved and they're meeting monthly and they're gearing up for a uh, spring uh, fest um, sometime at the end of March, I believe. And it's gonna feature, it's gonna be a community resource fair over at El Salvador Park. So we, all those CBOs are gonna be able to share with the community what they have going, maybe a sneak peek into what summer is gonna look like for everybody so parents can start planning and the community can start planning as well too. Our athletics division, is growing immensely. I mean, it's incredible what our, our team is doing. Um, one thing that I'd like to highlight is that our reservations office, which is controlled by our athletics uh, department uh, section, 
has issued 8,306 permits since the beginning of the fiscal year. And that's incredible because, I mean, again, the amount of time that they have to spend working with all of the user groups that they work with is, is really something. And they really pour out their heart and make sure that everybody's getting almost everything that they want. And, you know, one of the testaments that I like sharing with groups when, when I have an opportunity to is we went from eight legacy user groups, which they pretty much uh, monopolized all the fields within Santa Ana to where now we have 60 plus, all because of the athletic uh, reservation policy that we instituted at the beginning of January of last year. So they're really expanding how many people have access to our park facilities to utilize the amenities that are within our parks. And that's really a testament to what they're doing. We're currently in uh, boys youth basketball, and I think we're at like 450 participants. So that's going well. Um, we're gearing up for girls youth basketball and we're expanding to our, our adults. We're offering our uh, first ever uh, adult kickball league. So that's really exciting. Um, uh, it's featured in the, uh, the Cultura. Um, it's going to be starting in March, the end of March. So if you have a team and you want to play some old school kickball, uh, it's going to be a really great opportunity to kind of just have uh, a game where we all know and, you know, skill levels vary and everything like that, but you can get out there and have a really great time. Um, with that, I'll kind of put a pause there because, like I said, there was a lot of information, but if there's any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them at this time. Yes, this is Commissioner Wu. I'm really thankful for all the events. You've really made the neighborhood really happy. And I'm really glad to hear about the movie night because, of course, you know how the our teacher Pilar neighbors participate in that, which I'm glad to hear. Just need to get some dates on that. Also, expanding of the hours with the garden. I'm really glad for that because we have been wanting to work and expand. And also, we're going to do something with the spring festival with that. Uh, also, uh, with the swimming, um, I'm glad about that too. <laughs> uh, the only thing is that can we think about doing a canvas a patio cover for El Salvador Park? I have been there during the summertime and the parents have a hard time finding some shade while they're watching their kids. I should have mentioned that with Susan, but it, it's something that would be good. Uh, maybe more parents would come out for the swimming if, if there was. So that was just a suggestion. And I'm glad to participate with the Chris, uh, the spring event because we're going to have some resource information and working with that and working with Bill. So it's been really good. So I'm very glad to hear all these activities. And you're doing such a great job, Tim. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Commissioner Ruin. Just for your information, June 2nd through July 14th is our movies in the park. So they'll be featured Friday nights this year as opposed to Wednesdays. Um, because we figure we gather the families instead of them having to worry about going to work the next day, make it a Friday family night, and hopefully we'll be able to get a, a lot more folks out there. Something free, exciting to do in their park space, so um, July 2nd through July 14th. Uh, July 2nd and July 4th? June 2nd, excuse me, June 2nd through July 14th on Fridays. Oh, okay, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Uh, Commissioner San Matthews? Thank you. Uh, Timothy, you mentioned the uh, Santa Ana Collaborative um, Meetings. Can you provide me some more information on that? I certainly can. And in fact, uh, our recording secretary, uh, Mr. Sandoval, actually spearheads that. So, Bill, I don't know if you want to kind of share some information on what you've been working on and what you've been experiencing. Um, I, I think he would probably be the most appropriate person to share if he, he's willing to. Thank you. Thank you, Manager Pagano. Yes, Commissioner, uh, we have the opportunity to meet every month, and I believe Commissioner Gomez has also been a part of that collaborative. It's just a unique way for us to really get to know our neighbors, and, uh, you know, our nonprofit neighbors, uh, business, faith-based organizations, uh, school district, and we meet every second Wednesday of the month at 12 p.m. at El Salvador Center. So if you are interested, Commissioner, I will go ahead and have uh, Sarah, who uh, is one of my new employees who's doing an awesome job, send you the information via email, and hopefully you'll be able to join us at the next one coming up. That would be great. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Also, if I may, if there's not you know, any questions, but 
any 16 year olds you know that are interested in potentially uh, seeking a, uh, a para career in lifeguarding is really a great platform for those individuals that are maybe considering public safety as a career, um, teaching, um, medical. Um, you know, being a lifeguard, you have to go through about 33 hours and maybe even a little bit more of certification in order for you to be certified as a lifeguard. And a lot of the certifications that they go through are the same certifications that our members of SAPD and our Orange County Fire Authority have to go through. So again, it's really a great opportunity for those that are thinking about going in that line of work to really get some hands-on experience, um, great training and all that type of stuff. And hey, being outside during the summertime, getting, I think you can pay, get paid anywhere between $17 and $21 per hour based on the level of certifications that you get. So both we have recruitments open now. So if you want, if you have individuals that you'd like to recommend to us or push our way, feel free to have them reach out to me and I can get them in touch with our, our aquatics uh, section. Great, thank you so much, Manager Pagano. Do we have any other comments or questions? Yeah, Commissioner Nelson here. Um, I was uh, glad to hear, so the, the Preservation policy that is is now being implemented is that uh, are we up to a hundred percent of the uh, non youth the non nonprofits being uh, um, in compliance with the insurance and everything else is that that fair to say? Well, essentially, what you're seeing is, is that now that we've gone through our year of uh, learning about our reservation policy, now we're going through our execution phase. So what you saw at the beginning of uh, this year is the great sifting out, as we like to call it. So everybody that was learning, trying to move towards either nonprofit status or not nonprofit status, um, at the beginning of this year, if you were enjoying a... Uh, a group two, which would be in the Youth Sports Commission and a full on recognized uh, nonprofit that's doing you know, recreation or even competitive uh, programming. Um, if you didn't meet all of our qualifications, you drop to a, a tier three. And so what that means for us is that um, you, you lose priority in terms of what fields you're seeking. Um, so again, if maintaining that nonprofit status is really beneficial to you because <laughs> essentially you're getting the pick of the litter when it comes to our fields and our, our uh, facilities and everything like that. So um, that has helped immensely in terms of um, uh, the ease in which we're able to distribute the fields and everything. A hundred percent compliancy. I, 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 like I said, I think for those that are con continuing in our group two, yes, we, they are there. They have given us every piece of documentation that we need. For those mm -hmm. that weren't able to achieve that, they were moved down to a group three. And now it, we're, we're rightly positioned where they should be uh, after that first year of really trying to understand the athletic reservation policy. Got it. Okay. Appreciate that. Um, one more thing on regarding reservations. So, um, uh, football games at the, at the bowl. Um, I was uh, approached by uh, athletic department at Santa Ana high school regarding um, uh, Santa Ana PD being at their games um, unbeknownst to them and then getting charged uh, accordingly for having Santa Ana PD at their games. Um, and was where they were advised that uh, by reservations that this is something that's going to be happening going forward. Um, it's a difference of about fifteen to eighteen thousand dollars, depending upon how many games they play in a season um, at home, but um, for their athletic budget. So, just uh, any any understanding or how what that is about, um, as Santa Ana High School and, and other Santa Ana schools have uh, DSOs and school police that in those events. So just curious what, how that was implemented and, and, and why. Sure. And, and that goes along with, you know, the use of the stadium and the amount, the crowds that we're anticipating. So I think, and uh, Director Scott, if you can help me, I think that there's a requirement when there's a special event, which is what we're, we consider the use of the stadium, especially for the, uh, the amount of crowd is there's two officers for every 500 people that are at the stadium. And so that's something that it has always been in place, but it has never been enforced. So again, from our new leadership here with myself and with director Hawk Scott, 
you know, we're really adhering to our policies and procedures and everything. And while we understand, and we've also been in conversation with uh, the coach over at Santa Ana High School, there's areas of opportunity for us. Um, I think one of the things that we recognize is that Santa Ana High School is a little bit different than maybe some of the other high schools where they're going to be using it on a continuing basis, not only for football, but also for soccer. So we're looking at alternative solutions for maybe uh, putting together a, um, a lease agreement with Santa Ana High School uh, so that we can spell out the fact that Santa Ana High School has DSOs that the you know, in almost extenuating circumstances based on how we're reading the application, maybe the the level of the game that's being played there is when we would then maybe consider bringing in SAPD, but not it almost being an automatic thing with the way that it is right now. So we are aware of it and thank you for bringing it up to us, but that's kind of where we're, where we're at and kind of what we're experiencing. But I think we have some alternative solutions that we can pursue in the near future to kind of remedy that. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Of course. Um, and just one more, one more quick note or question or kind of addition here. Um, so, you know, regarding that, the futsal course that I was throwing out there, I, I really think that's a great opportunity for our, our city programming to actually kind of something they could take control of and actually, I think, benefit and even profit from, um, you know, as there would be probably plenty of tier three and even, even outside entities that would, you know, on these rainy days, you could, you know, they could not find a spot of to, to practice, to do anything. And, you know, Anaheim, they charge, I believe it's $35 an hour um, for those facilities. And, it, you know, it's it's um, a great way to get a lot of kids outside still being able to play soccer. And, um, you know, when it's inclement weather, but also just year round. I mean, and, and they're secure, you know, they're kind of Hate to say it, but kind of fenced in and, and, and in a secure environment where it, it's uh, something that I think the city easily uh, program and manage um, at a profit. So, sure. Uh, I, I really like the idea of looking at our existing tennis courts. We do have a 3v3 uh, 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 mini pitch for futsal programming over at Delhi Park. And we do have an agreement in place with uh, PepsiCo and Lays to install a 5v5 uh, synthetic turf mini pitch over at Cesar Chavez Campesino. We're just trying to get through some of the technical aspects of it. And Susie has been a great help with regards to that. But we are anticipating that being installed and having a grand opening by the middle of April. So fingers crossed, we may have a new amenity on the west side of town with regards to uh, a futsal mini pitch. Fantastic, thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you, Commissioner Nelson. Do we have any other commissioners that would like to make comment or have questions? Um, Manager Pagano, thank you so much for um, your update. I, I love that we have, we're, we're, we're ready to launch, you know, we're, we're, we're moving through year, you know, three of the pandemic, but, you know, we're, we're continuing to be out there. And that is amazing. If we can replicate what we did last year in terms of the programming, I think that that's going to be amazing. I know we keep on hearing the word R for recession. And usually that's a time when, you know, you have to really, um, you know, uh, reserve, save, but, you know, what we learned through the pandemic is that people want to be out in, in the parks. You know, our parks are great for mental health. They're great for getting us through very difficult times. And so even though we may be going through a recession in the next year or two or, you know, in the future, I, I would still love for us to retain, you know, the levels of programming that we have for our residents. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Chairperson. Um, okay, so I think we're on our way out here. So next on the agenda are commissioner comments. And this is a time for each commissioner to provide comments if you wish, but it is not required. Let's start with Commissioner Sen Matthews. No comments on my end. Okay, we'll move on to Commissioner Torreblanca. Uh, hey, folks, so I do have a couple comments. First, I do want to thank, um, you know, you folks for all the directors for everything they're doing. Um, you folks are really doing a great job um, in terms of getting, you know, keeping our our staff busy and kind of keeping our communities um, entertained. 
So I really love that. Um, I just wanted to ask for a couple updates moving forward. Um, one is I wanted to see if I could get an update on the those PFAS filters. I know last year we talked about um, installing uh, PFAS filters on uh, for some of our water wells. I kind of wanted to see if we could get an update on that. Um, I haven't received anything since, I believe, from that meeting we talked about it. Um, we talked about, I know in the meeting we talked about kind of like beautifying them and whatnot. Um, and I know I expressed kind of wanting to um, expedite those um, filters because I know, I mean, water is really important for us. So I wanted to see if I could get an update on those PFAS filters, uh, preferably by next, um, before the next meeting. Um, besides that, uh, just one more update. I wanted to see if I could get an update on team programming. So moving forward, I, I do love what we're doing with the city. Um, and I, I know we've, re we've received some money kind of from the cannabis funding. Um, I know some of that has gone to PD and some of that has gone towards teen funding. So I kind of wanted to see what we're funding with those programs and kind of how that's going to um, look moving forward this year. Thank you, Commissioner Torreblanca. I, I seem to have skipped over my notes, but our teen excur excursion program is still very vibrant. In fact, we're looking to expand it to where we're doing going to be doing two excursions per month and really incorporating what is a really passion project of mine is making the first excursion being almost a service or experiential based um, field trip and we're targeting universities. So what I've charged my team group to do is to look at how we can do college tours either at USC, UCLA, um, the community colleges and everything and really make that a experience for them that again, otherwise they may not have access to, you know, those type of opportunities, learn about the schools, you know, kind of hear how they would need to get into those schools and then still follow it up with like a major excursion um, to a theme park or to, um, you know, an entertainment venue and stuff like that. So we are in the process of expanding that. Um, this first year, we were kind of like, OK, let's make sure that we have enough funds to be able to do that. Um, I mm -hmm. think in the next week or so, we're going to be going back and talking about cannabis funding and how it's allocated going into the next fiscal mm -hmm. year or so. You know, we're going to be uh, taking a hard look at that and making sure that we're supporting our team excursion program moving forward. So uh, thank you for the opportunity. I, I definitely did skip over that in my note. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I think I, I love that we're adding on an educational aspect as well. Um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm really passionate about kind of a team programming, kind of making sure our, our youth are entertained. Uh, so I love that we're doing that and that we're moving it up to two a month. I mean, that's incredible. Um, so I love that. Thank you. And uh, I yield my time to the chair. Great. Thank you so much, Commissioner Torreblanca. Uh, Commissioner Nelson? Yeah, hello. Um, I, yeah, I just want to follow up and, you know, thanks everybody for your, your reports and, and, and kind of giving us the overlook of, of everything um, and then being so uh, gracious to, to answer our questions and, and with such insight. So, um, yeah, thank you for that. And, you know, I, I just, you know, as we're coming, you know, I, I guess out of the pandemic, it you, you can just see that there's opportunities to, uh, to kind of capitalize on 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 facilities and things that we do have in, in the master plan. I'm really looking forward to seeing how that all comes together and, and, and gets implemented. So thank you for your guys' efforts and uh, we'll catch you at the next meeting. Great. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Wu? Uh, yes, I just wanted to say a few words. I was very thankful that there are, I'm very concerned about family events and that we're doing so many and that's oh, we're organizing some for the spring that, that my neighborhood in the association is going to be participating. So thank you very much, staff. And yes, uh, thank you again. That's all. And I like hearing all the activities that's going on. Great. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Gomez? Hi, yeah, like everybody else says, I'm always happy to hear the programs and, and new things happening. I'm really excited about the fireplace in the library, Brian. So please keep us updated when it's ready because I will be visiting you. Amina's a reader too, so I'll, I'll go with her and read in front of your fireplace. Do you have a date in mind when that's going to be completed? So um, construction will probably begin January 2024. We're expecting to be closed for about... 12 months or so to get it all done. So we're probably looking sometime 2025. So it's, it's a giant project. Um, the building needs a lot of, um, besides all the fun, great, you know, things on that we see in terms of, you know, uh, 
things like furniture, fireplaces, new desks, new, you know, new, you know, everything, lighting, shelving. It's a lot of the HVAC mechanicals, which are all original 1959. So they're all end of life mechanical systems. So pretty much where we have to pull everything out and replace all of kind of the internal workings of the building. Um, so it's, it's quite a process to um, get it all done, but we're in the design phase now. And, um, you know, we'll be going out to uh, bid for construction and we'll sometime look for it 2025. Thank so you. Not, not that far off. A couple years <laughs> <laughs> before Thank the you. whole building, but it'll be a complete transformation of the building. I heard. I'm so excited about it. Yep. Thank you. Thank you so much. And then I really wanted to ask too, I know I've been saying this, but we haven't had an in-person meeting and we're already going towards the end of the pandemic. So I don't know if you guys have considered having, and maybe not all of them, maybe alternating, but it seems like all the city staff are back to in-person and we're still virtual. So just some food for thought. Thank you, Chairperson Gomez. Uh, that is one thing that the uh, clerk of the council is looking into. One of the uh, issues that we run into is that when we do live meetings, uh, it may mean that there is another meeting going on elsewhere and that we are not able to use the same system as that. However, uh, that's something that the clerk of the council is working on. And as soon as we uh, get an okay from them, then we would definitely inform the commission about moving forward with uh, in-person meetings. I will say as uh, it was, I did have the opportunity to, to uh, meet uh, Commissioner Wu out in public uh, in passing. And it was absolutely fantastic to, to actually see each other in person. Um, and, um, you know, I welcome that as well. So, and then I was also, I, when, uh, I was, uh, uh, um, talk, you were handing out the, uh, the news flyers and I, I was, I, I got a, a great copy of it and was skimming through it. And, and, uh, that was, that was quite nice as well. So, uh, um, although I did have to give it up, uh, to a, a nice lady who was really interested in it. So I uh, passed it on to somebody else. So. Uh, that was that was quite nice. So thank you. Yeah, well, uh, once that new one does come out again, we, you know, I will be doing the same at the uh, city council meeting and pass them out, as well as our staff's going to be going out and having them at the rec centers and pass them out. And I'm sure Brian, and his team's going to do the same. And you know, Ethan, you know, will do the same out there too. So you know, our purpose is once we get them, is to ship them all out as soon as possible, so we don't have any, you know, what we ordered. Great. Thank you, commissioners, um, for for your words. Um, I do <clears throat> want to say um, for my words uh, that I hope we continue to have monthly meetings. I know I've been talking with Executive Director Scott um, on, you know, even, even if we don't have any new business, I think talking about the programs, upcoming dates, the timeline on our uh, updating our projects for the parks, I think that those are are great. So I, you know, I encourage um, the commission to really, um, you know, uh, let's put that effort to really meet monthly. I think it would be great. Um, I'm working. I'm working with um, city planner Ferginac to plan uh, uh, consider a parks master plan presentation, a short presentation um, for next month. So that's something I wanted to mention. Uh, also, uh, under I, our bylaws, so we have bylaws, and uh, our roles and responsibilities and duties of the commission are to act in an advisory capacity and consider the proposed annual budget for parks, recs, and community services. So it is our role to make uh, to um, consider the budget and to make recommendations to the city manager and city council. So. Uh, working with the executive director, um, you know, seeing how we can uh, bring a, a draft proposed budget for Parks and Recs for uh, our consideration here on the commission. And um, uh, Commissioner Gomez, and um, as, as Commissioner Nelson also mentioned, I think uh, looking into a little bit more about in-person meetings, I think, uh, you know, I think that's something to consider and see, uh, you know, what's available as we move forward. Um, and so I don't have any other comments outside of um, 
you know, it's it's a it's a brand new year and we're off to a great start for our parks and rec. So I'm very excited for our department and for all the activities, events and open green space that we're, we're going to be working on this year. So thank you all so much. Uh, this is the conclusion of the meeting. Um, the next regular meeting will take place on Thursday, February 23rd, 2023. And meeting will be adjourned at uh, 6.53. Thank you so much, everyone. Good night, everyone. Goodbye. Good night. All right, everybody. Good night. Bye bye.